Hey everyone, it's Aaron from God A Minute. We are waiting for the soon rapture of the church. Hopefully it's real soon. Hopefully it's today, as soon as possible. Let's fly. But until then, let's learn about God's story and all his truths. This is one thing that's puzzled a lot of people. And I just wanted to make a quick video on this. I'm going to re be reading from my, this is my hard copy of my uh, King James Version, or sorry, New King James Version. And I also have an amplified version here. Uh, those are my two hard copies that I like. I also read from all different translations. I don't like the translation war. Read whatever translation you want and uh, bounce back and forth when you're studying something. But uh, here we go. This verse, Assuredly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And so some people take this and go, oh, see, you know, the millennial reign already happened or, you know, what's going on? You know, the second coming already happened. And so that's not the case. So, before we get into this, I want to read just a quick little thing from Matthew 26 here. And right here, Matthew 26, verse 34, Jesus said to him, this is Jesus talking to Peter, Assuredly, I say to you that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And so what Jesus is doing here is he's he's giving a prophecy, really. It's a very, very short-term prophecy, but a prophecy is a prediction of something that's happening in the future. And so this very night, you're going to deny me three times. And the fulfillment of that is in Matthew 16, sorry, 26, verse um, 75. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus who had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So he wept, went out and wept bitterly. So this prophecy was a very, very short-term prophecy. Within hours, Jesus said, you're going to deny me. And then Peter did. So that's a prophecy in and of itself. So sometimes prophecies, they don't need to take, you know, years and thousands of years to come to play. Sometimes it's just within a day, within a week, within a few days, within a few months, within a few years. So here we have this verse that's kind of a head scratcher. Well, what happens after this verse of Matthew 16, 28? We've got this uh, Mount of Transfiguration story. And what ends up happening is we have... Um, Peter and James and John, who are eyewitnesses of this event. And Jesus is hanging out with Moses and Elijah, and he's got a transformation. And, and what they're seeing is Jesus in, in his glory, in his kingdom. It's like a future event. It's back to the future is really what it is. You know, the movie Back to the Future, when you're, you're, you're they're going forward in time and, and back in time or whatever, they just, they're going through time and space, and they're just seeing something. And so what they did was they kind of went through time and space, and... Peter, James, and John were eyewitnesses of Jesus and his kingdom at this moment. And really, it's really important here to see that this, in the words of Christ, it says, tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. So this was a vision. This was a vision of a future event. And scripture interprets scripture. So what we're going to do now is get some more detail in Second Peter. So Peter was a witness. And so what does Peter say? In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 16 and on. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So he's explaining here that they were eyewitnesses of seeing um, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Further on, we read, For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And when he heard this voice, which came from heaven, when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so, we have the prophetic word confirm, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. So, Peter is, in a nutshell, saying here that, hey, we, we saw it all play out in a vision. And it says, uh, again, verse 16, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We were eyewitnesses of this whole event. We kind of went back to the future. Uh, I can't think of the song right now, but... I think I'm singing Indiana Jones. I don't know what I'm singing, but... Okay, so amplified version. Uh, where's where's the camera here? Where's a good angle? And it, it says here, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, there are some of those standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. 
And this hard copy down here gives you a little bit of an explanation in the transfiguration, Peter, James, and John saw a preview of the kingdom. Jesus was explaining that very soon those three disciples would see him glorified as he will be in the kingdom. So certainly read Isaiah or Matthew 17 to get more of the details, but this is what's going on. This is what that, that verse means by some of you will not taste death because they, they it was a literal short-term prophecy. That That's what I'm getting at here. Just like Jesus had a short-term hour within hours of his prophecy that peter was going to deny him we also have a short-term prophecy here in this particular passage from matthew 16 to matthew 17 a very short term it looks like it's a six-day prophecy like six days later after this saying it maybe is what we're getting at i'm assuming it's a very short-term uh prophecy that was fulfilled in matthew 17 and again in um second peter chapter one in the amplified version We'll read a little bit here, and this is verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories or myths when we uh, made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, his grandeur, his authority, his sovereignty. So just another way of explaining that they saw Jesus in his, his, his coming. For when he was invested with honor and the radiance of the Shekinah glory from God the Father, such a voice as this came to him from the splendid majestic glory in the bright cloud that overshadowed him, saying, This is my son, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased and delighted. And then Amplified here clarifies it's connecting the dots to Matthew 17, verse 5. And we actually heard this voice made from heaven when we were together with him on the holy mountain. And then it clarifies the connection to Matthew 17, verse 6. So again, the concluding statement here is that we have a connection. Here, I'll turn the camera around. Anyway, the concluding statement is that Matthew 16, 28 was a prophecy of the Mount of Transfiguration in which Peter was an eyewitness of a future event in the form of a vision. And then he clarifies that in 2 Peter chapter 1, 16 through 21. There you go. Scripture, interpreting scripture, and the millennial reign did not happen. The second coming did not happen. And you can share this with any of your friends and family that did not understand this verse or the context of it. Uh, pray this blessed you. We're hoping to get out of here as fast as possible. Come, Jesus, come. Go, Jesus, go. See in the clouds. One day closer. Adios, muchachos. Hi.